the transmission. Everything from that windshield back is nothing but sheet metal. It's lightweight. Going through this front straightaway, this is going to be the part of the track where you're going to be flying foot to the wood, pin down throttle, and that front end's going to want to push out. Now, what the problem is, is going down into turns number one and two, like you see the field doing right now, that back end's going to want to slide out when you tap the brakes, because that back end of the car literally will lift up off the ground, and you're going to be trying to counter steer that whole corner. The whole, the most treacherous spot on this racetrack is right in front of you, folks. This tri-oval, it gets tight, it gets very tight, and if you catch one of those tires, your day can be done. Make some noise as we get ready to go green for Night of Destruction! Look at these cars slipping and sliding through the corners, a lot of speed and not a lot of grip with these street tires. And the 71 leads lap number one that is Boy Molina. This is where you have to be careful going through this section. We got some cars that everyone makes it through, but a battle for the lead, Tommy, the 117 on the outside. Look at that nice Celica. Oh, we're gonna go three wide here on the front straightaway. Three wide.
30 lap main event. Hudson's joined where they're at. See the 17's up on the top of the board. So far, a nice payday. If your last name is Hudson in this enduro race. Oh, yeah. And now, just because the 17 machine has a huge lead right now over the 117, doesn't mean he's out of danger. No, no. This car, at any point, trouble can strike and catch you a leader. And suddenly, that changes the entire complexity of this race. Oh, look at this back going into turn three. Are they going to make it out of turn four is the question. Here's where our bottlenecks coming through the start finish line. Everybody, again, picking their lane. Oh, yeah. And there's some trouble on the front straightaway. Haven't, haven't busted a, a, a radiator yet from what I see. to have everyone mad at everybody. It's a points-paying NASCAR division. So Robert Rice Jr. and Molina having some words over in turn number three. And they might they might not be done. They might not be done. Yeah, you can see one of them's going to have to, both of them going to have to go to pick your part for 50% off. I'm, look, I'm looking at the front end of the number five machine right now. That thing is squared up and hit a little bit shorter. Tommy, there were a couple issues that kind of happened all at once. If you look over in turn number two, I see the 101 machine. That car took a hard hit to the front end at some point. Yeah, that's the 101 driver Mulqueen. of Tim Mulqueen. Now, for the fans, normally in an endurance race like this, we do not throw a yellow. There's no pausing. If there's crashes, everybody's got to figure it out and race under their own risk. Everything, it's Oh, uh, see, now now this is actually teamwork, what's going on on the front straightaway right yeah. here. 37, trying to help rip off the back bumper of the 50, which I guess doesn't matter in an endurance race. There you go. That's how you up. do it. So, so normal conditions here at Irwindale Speedway. In the endurance race, we do not go yellow. It's green or red. We have to go yellow, though, because we had uh, the 101 who was literally stuck on an island in his own uh, 101 machine. So a lot of drivers, we, we had to rescue drivers, so we had to get him out. A lot of the times we do leave the cars in the way, but with a... Uh, 
Six laps to go, we'll just move them out of the way and re-line up this field. You'll notice over in turns three and four, the number 79 machine, I don't know if that driver was involved with the 101's issues, but John Bridger, looks like that car shut down. Now, is it me, Tommy, or did the Celica add himself to the to the Dr. Danger pile? You know, that would be a great place to park I, any other day but today. I don't, any I don't. Any other day but today. That's, that's not the best parking spot. So bummer for Molina, he was right there in the fifth spot. He was battling, you see up on the scoreboard, 71 and 50, those two were battling for fifth at the time of the crash. Now I want to point out something too, because this is one of those things that you don't always notice from the grandstands, but we know as drivers, these are sometimes dangerous moments for these cars, Tommy. I'm looking down the 19 machine, it looks like Argo, that car is overheating. That's and demon. That, yeah, that, that's sometimes because these cars rely on the air flowing while they're driving around. So sometimes you park it, you don't want to shut off your car, because if you do, it might not restart. Are we, are we, it looks like those cars at least moved from their parking spot. Yeah, I think they heard us. I I think they knew that today was not the day to park next to others. Mike Atkinson helping us out with the forklift. Wow, look how messed up that 71 machine. Can we get a round of applause for some of these night of destruction competitors? So just to put into perspective, fans, for those of you that came here for the first time, you and I, Jeffrey, we race out here, and a lot of these other competitors, that 71 machine, he probably spent a good 40 hours at least on that 71 machine, and it only made it 24 laps. So he's going to spend a lot more time just to get that thing fixed back up, to tear it up again on the next night of destruction. That's right. Well, Tommy, I see, I see Lugnut Jr. down there. Who wants a t-shirt? Make some noise. He's got that cannon ready. I see. I see Kevin. What's going on down there, Kevin? I can't even hear you guys down here. It's so loud. Irwindale, make some noise for Lugna Jr. Well, most of the cars are looking okay. But, Tommy, we got a couple cars that do not look very good right now. A couple of them have some bad habits, some smokers out there. And then we also got uh, that 37 is really smoking on the back straightaway. Then we got our, our, lever, our number 11 machine. Who's getting the help from Jan Stowing up off that racetrack? And we still got ourselves six laps of duking it out. The field looks super antsy to go. Hey, folks, also acknowledge this cameraman walking right in front of you. You're on TV. We only have a number of laps to go, Tommy. And what this is going to do, it's going to bunch everything back up together. The 89 machine of Top Happerney, for those that didn't notice, that car left some fluid over in turn number one. And now Todd, Todd needs to be careful, because if I'm correct, I believe that's the same car he's planning on running in the figure eight race. Yeah, so he's going to try to maximize what he's got for that number 89. And the 99 also off as well. Paul Schmidt in the number 99 from Alta Loma. Looks like we're, so what's going on right now is the field getting lined back up. A couple of lap cars in between your top two, the 17. In the lead right now from Garden Grove, that's Daniel Hudson. And then you got two lap cars in between. And we got the one, number 117, who's running in second, Michael Hudson. They're gonna have Michael, you know, the odd man out, if you will. He's gonna have to deal with some lap traffic. On top of the flag stand, they're giving him the run to go around the track. The yellow lights are out, signifying that we'll be back to green this time by. So to get, get everybody caught up here, the top seven cars in this race are on the lead lap. That's the 17, 117, the 81, the 19, the 71, the 50, and the 37. And I wouldn't count any of those cars out right now. When we go green here for a six lap shootout to the end, because anything can and typically does happen on nights of destructions. It's gonna look like when the uh, the higher patrol lets the, the field loose. 
on the uh, closed freeway. Here we go. Signal is going to come to an end. And green flag. Back to racing. Six lap shootout. And a quick move by the 81 machine and the 19 Tommy to take over the second spot for the 117. Can the 81 of Howell get up there? The 19 of Argo. We saw that car overheating. A year later, once again, continues to be the 17 machine of Daniel Hudson. Oh, we got him stacked up coming to the bottleneck. Good, clean, fun right there. Sideways was the 04 machine, the station wagon, Holiday Road. A lot of people he could fit in there. A lot of transponders. The 117 machine seems to be, uh, at least was having some issues out of turning before. Looks like it's back up to the pace, but the 19 car is definitely still smoking. Can these cars make it to the finish? That's going to be the question. The race winding down. It is a race of attrition. These cars are all going to be bubbling over, boiling hot. The coolant, the brakes, the tires, everything in these cars are hoping to try to make it for the next three laps. Everybody's going to have to figure this one. They're going to keep there. it out there, Tommy, but you've got to avoid that tire over in the turn. You're the leader. Sees it. Avoids it. One lap to go. A lot of drivers trying to take evasive action through turns number three and four. The number 17 coming to the checkered flag. Daniel Hudson with the Enduro win in that Integra there. Second spot will be the 80 run of Steady Eddie Howell, third place, number 19 of Argo. And a lot of work these drivers are going to have to do to get these cars cooled down and into the next event coming up in just a little bit. That'll be our figure eight race for the next racing class on the track. Ladies and gentlemen, are you enjoying your night of destruction? That's what I like to hear right there. Woo! Well, if it makes anyone feel any better, that was the calm one of the night. Yes, that was. And uh, I wouldn't leave your seats too quickly. We're going to do our post-race interviews. And then uh, I see on my schedule, the next thing coming up here on Night of Destruction is, it says right here, Dr. Danger, blow up. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice. Uh, it's just I'm just for, reading. For, I'm just reading what it says for so, Doctor Danger. Some guy named Doctor Danger is probably not going to be uh, enjoying the breeze for much longer. So the top three coming to the front straight away for their post-race interview trophies and all and I'm going to send it on down to my co-partner hey Tim Huddleston. You know that kind of just looked like bumper to bumper traffic on the 210. What do you think? Dude, Daniel, how about that man? Dude, that was uh, more than traffic on the 210 freeway I would say. Yeah, I was right behind that wreck when uh, number 71 went to the wall. It was pretty scary. Yeah, I'm telling you this Enduro class is building and building here at uh, Irwindale. We're sure proud of it. This is a NASCAR division, guys. Um, this is the, the entry-level form of NASCAR. Any of you up there can build one of these in your garage and bring it out here and race. Daniel, tell them how it's done. Um, yeah, pick a car, find a cheap off Craigslist, and gut it. I mean, that's that's pretty much how it is. These cars are all stock. They're cheap to build. You know, pick the right car. That's that's one of the big things. All right, Tim Four, who do you want to thank? I want to thank Fantasy Muffler for, you know, building a cage in the car. All my friends and family that put in a lot of work, a lot of time. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Daniel, congratulations. Great job.